Step 5. Entanglement as a resource. So let's go back and revisit our CHSH game from the first step. We have seen that entanglement can actually help players A and B win the game more often. If they share an entangled state, they can perform measurements on it, and this will help them in winning the game with higher probability. But what happens in this process of measurement is that A and B, in fact, destroy the entanglement shared between these two uh, gray qubits. So, maybe they manage to win the game, uh, at least this particular round, but if they want to win again, they have to find a way of re-establishing this entanglement or creating a new entangled pair, which they can share and then use in the new round of the game. Similarly, entanglement is crucial in quantum networks. Let's have a very small and simple quantum network. These blue dots, they represent our network nodes. So they can represent qubits or uh, uh, ensembles of qubits, and these black lines, they represent entanglement shared between the nodes. And let's say that we have uh, one sender node and one receiver node. Here is the sender that would like to send some quantum message to the receiver on the other end of the network. So one way of doing that is via teleportation. We're going to go into details of teleportation later. But for now, what you just have to remember is that teleportation uses measurements and entanglement to propagate the information from one physical place into a different one. So here, sender node has this state represented by a red, uh, a red circle, and it is trying to communicate this state all the way to the receiver node. So what the sender, can, sender node can do is perform a measurement. This will consume the entangled link to the sender's neighbor, but at the same uh, time propagate the information to this node. Then what happens next is this new node performs the same type of measurement, which again will consume the entanglement between itself and uh, this neighbor here. And again, the following neighbor performs a measurement and finally the quantum information reaches the receiver node. So good, the sender has succeeded in um, getting the message to the receiver. But look at the state of the network now. It's very different from what it was before. All of these entangled links have been destroyed through the application of measurements. So in order for the network to be fully functional again, we must have some process of re-establishing these destroyed links, re-establish entanglement between these links. So in this way, we can think of uh, entanglement as the fuel that drives many quantum technologies. It, uh, entanglement offers improved and sometimes completely new functionality that is not seen in either classical networks or classical computation. And the uh, resource that entanglement is, is consumed, just like fuel in your car or battery in your camera. And we must have a way of re-establishing it such that, again, we can uh, take advantages of uh, entanglement that are present in uh, quantum technologies. And the speed and efficiency with which we can do this are one, is one of the main limiting factors in quantum technologies such as quantum networks.